Artists have been making bronze jewelry for thousands of years. With the introduction of bronze clay, modern jewelry artists have a wonderful medium which is inexpensive in comparison to silver and gold clays, allowing the artist to be more generous and experimental with their designs and creativity. Today we will briefly talk about the characteristics of bronze clay as we create a simple rustic bronze pendant. If you are new to metal clay or bronze clay, this project is great for beginners. Initially, keep bronze clay in the refrigerator. The binder in bronze clay works best when it's cool. When you remove the clay from the package, it will be a little hard, a bit sticky, and may seem difficult to work with. Before handling the clay, condition your hands with a non-stick conditioner like Slick. This will help keep the clay from sticking to your hands. Next, spritz the clay with water or water mixed with a drop or two of lavender oil. The lavender oil enhances its workability and also keeps the clay from drying out, cracking, or oxidizing as you work with it. Work the clay between your fingers, kneading and rolling to soften. This takes a bit of time. Overworking the clay can make it feel stiff. If this happens, let the clay sit for a few minutes to cool down and relax, or place it in the refrigerator to cool faster. The tools I will need for this project are slick for conditioning my hands, a work surface with Teflon, clay rolling frames, a clay roller, spray bottle with water and lavender oil, cool slip used as a releasing agent on the texture, clay pick, texture tile, jewelry shape template, two small dishes for making slip, a palette knife and a small brush, drinking straw or small round tube, sanding and refining tools, and a dry artist brush for dusting. Start by spritzing your work surface and roller with the water lavender mixture. Roll the clay out to six cards thick. Here I'm using our number six rolling frame. Lay the texture on the work surface and spray with cool slip to keep the clay from sticking. Using the smoothest side of the rolled out clay, place gently on the texture tile. Using a number four rolling frame, roll from the center out for best results. Carefully remove the clay from the texture I'm using our body wave texture tile, which will give a nice design. It turned out great. Now return it to the work surface. Using a jewelry shape template in the shape of your choice, position the template onto the design where you want it. Cut out the desired shape. Here I'm using our shields jewelry shape template. Remove the scrap pieces to use for the bail and set aside. Leave the pendant on the work surface and set aside, allowing it to dry. Next, I'll make the bale for the pendant. Start by spritzing your work surface and roller with the water lavender mixture. Re-roll your clay at four cards thick. Spray with cool slip to keep the clay from sticking. Now roll the clay into the texture, this time to three cards thick. The thinner slab will lend itself to a smaller component such as a bale. The bale should measure about one and a quarter inches long and about a quarter inch wide. Cut out the preferred shape for your bale. I'm using the same template but a smaller version of a shield. Collect the scraps of unused clay and place them in a small Ziploc plastic bag. Spritz the inside of the bag with water to maintain the moisture or place the bag in a clay hydrator to extend its useful life and refrigerate. Using a straw or other similar round object, form your bale around the straw and set it aside to dry. Once the two pieces are leather hard, also known as the greenware state, we can get started refining them. Using an emery file or one of our Cool Tools smoothies, Sand all the edges of the bale and the pendant with a very light touch. Smooth any rough edges. While the parts are in their greenware state is the very best time to sand and refine 
as it's much easier to refine dry clay than solid bronze. I make final touches with a 3M ultra fine sanding pad which works great as they are flexible and can be cut into any shape. Don't forget to sand the back of the pendant. When refining is complete, make a small amount of slip. Slip is used as a bonding agent or glue and is made from water and clay. Start with a small pinch of clay, spritz with the water and lavender oil mixture. Use a palette knife or small stiff brush to work the water into the clay. You want this mixture to be thick as it will act as a bonding agent to bond the bale to the pendant. Apply the slip to the pendant where you will be attaching the bale. Coat both the front and back sides. Place the bale and pinch it into place. Smooth the excess slip, if any, with an artist brush. Dip the artist brush into water and blot on a paper towel. Blend the seam where the bale meets the pendant to finish the join. Then set aside to dry. Slip dries out quickly and can be easily rehydrated with a quick spritz of your water mixture and stir. For added decoration, I'm adding a small round ball to the bale. Pinch a tiny piece of clay from your scrap and roll it into a ball. Use a small dab of the slip to glue into place. Press gently. Clean up any slip around the edges with the slightly damp brush. Set everything aside to dry completely. It's best if left overnight, or you can expedite the drying process by using a dehydrator on low. High heat can remove the moisture too quickly, which can cause cracking and deformation. After the pendant is dry, look it over one last time to make sure the bale is attached and aligned properly. Do any additional light sanding at this time. Lightly brush the piece to remove any sanding dust prior to firing. Next, place the pendant in a stainless steel firing container or our no flake firing foil filled with activated carbon. This carbon is coal based and is a good choice for bronze clay as it will give the fired piece an oxygen free environment as it transforms from leather hard clay into solid bronze. When placing the piece in the firing container, make sure that there is at least one half inch of carbon between the bottom of the container and the unfired piece then cover with an inch of carbon on the top. Place the lid on the container and place it in the kiln on a kiln shelf above the kiln floor. This allows heat to circulate around the box. Program the kiln for the long schedule. Ramp the kiln at 500 degrees per hour until it reaches the target temperature of 1550. Once at 1550, we hold that temperature for a full two hours. After firing, let the kiln cool naturally and remove the piece from the carbon. This is the exciting part. Carefully remove the pendant from the carbon using a slotted spoon or tongs as the carbon or the pendant may still be hot. This pendant has a nice oxidation on it. Look at the greens and golds. Beautiful. This piece could be left as is or it could be further finished depending on your taste. To make the pendant look like new, brush it with a steel brush or use a Fordham with a steel brush attachment and polish with a polishing paper to remove any oxidation. You can also add an antique finish after polishing by using patina gel. This newly made pendant has a lovely antiqued appearance. Add a chain, a leather or satin cord of your choice, and you're ready to enjoy. If you like this project and would like to make this pendant, we have assembled everything you need in one kit. The link is listed in our blog.
visit our Learning Center at www.cooltools.us for more cool jewelry making videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channels, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to sign up for the email list to be the first to hear about new videos, products, and other cool stuff from Cool Tools.